Morning, it's Jim in beautiful Beaverton, Oregon. Well, today is the uh, 27th of January. It's uh, 34 degrees outside with the wind blowing. It's cold out there. So we're going to film inside today. This, of course, we're back to the uh, inside uh, aquaponic system. Uh, let's uh, turn around in a second here and I'll show you that I have a new fish tank, but we're not going to talk about that today. Uh, on around here to the Rayukan goldfish. These guys, uh, the last time they were on film, were about a third as big as they are now. They're gorgeous goldfish. Uh, and they're absolutely perfectly suited to this environment. What you want to remember when you're buying goldfish for your aquaponic system is uh, if, if you have a limit in tank size, buy a fancy goldfish. Because if you buy a comet, uh, it will be way too big and way too fast. These guys, it takes them about five minutes to get from that end to this end. If you had a comet, it would be like that. So anyhow, they're uh, doing really well. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. So today I'm going to do something that I have been wanting to do since I was a little kid, really. And that is I'm going to grow some mushrooms. And I've got this mushroom kit that I picked up. from Bridgetown Mushrooms. Bridgetown.com is will get them and we'll put a link in the description that'll let you do that. So I bought this, it's the most obscure little shop. If you're into getting into obscure little shops and like the adventure, this is the place you wanna go. Uh, it's about the size of this room, maybe a little bit bigger, but the, the guy there was extremely helpful and quite willing to tell me everything I want to know about mushrooms. So what I bought was a uh, blue mushroom grow kit. This comes with everything you need, by the way. I'm going to geek it out, so uh, that's just me. This is, it comes with a knife, by the way, it's a glass spray bottle, not plastic. Uh, it has a piece of uh, burlap, which I have taken out, that comes with it. And you can literally open this up and use the box itself to grow if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to do that, so that's just me. But what I am going to do, take this off, put it right there, put this back here. The, uh, the guy that sold me this put these rubber bands around it and checked it to make sure it was good and he drew this mark to cut, so it's kind of hard to miss. Uh, but you know, it's, it's like an appendectomy. You only got one shot at it, so you got to figure out how you want to go about it. So I thought about knives and stuff, and it kind of brought me back. Uh, I should say, when I was a kid, which was in, God, the late 50s, believe it or not, every little boy, when he was old enough to open a pocket knife, had a pocket knife. I mean, we're talking five, six years old. You cut yourself a lot. And I've been cutting myself ever since, but every every boy, every man, this is a man's knife, dates pretty far back, this is a really nice one, by the way, a Puma, uh, made in Germany. So, I'm so used to carrying a knife, I don't understand how anyone gets by without it, but nobody this, these days carry it. What they do is they know an old geezer that's got a knife, and they come and get him when they need one. So anyhow, one more story before I get on to the real guts of the whole thing here. Uh, if you're a maintenance supervisor, such as I was, uh, you, whatever facility you're in, you'll have a desk. And if anybody finds a knife, whoever they are, they come and they bring and they put it on your desk. And almost never do you see who brought the knife, but you just come in and, and there'll be a knife just laying there on your desk. This knife was one of those. It's a really expensive knife, by the way. Uh, so was this knife, which is the knife which I'm going to use for the operation. This is a uh, Leatherman, really nice knife. Uh, I'm going to wipe it off here with a little bit of alcohol in my hands, too. I'm going to try to remain as sterile as we can. Anyhow, over the years, I probably collected a dozen or so good knives just in that manner on my desk. So 
uh, interesting thing to know. Now, as I say, they put a rubber band around this to hold the plastic in tight so as to make it easy. So we're just going to cut an X there and there. So here we go. There we got it. Now, this uh, distilled water is what it calls for. We're going to uh, spray it on the inside with distilled water. The trick, if, uh, now again, I've never done this before. Usually I like to do things and then talk about them, but I'm not going to do that this time is to keep everything nice and moist. Now we're going to bring this block around. I've altered one of my grow beds. I'll pick this off of here. Normally I keep a really low humidity because of various reasons, but these guys want high humidity. So, I'm going to put it right in here like that. I've run some tests on this and it's running about uh, close to 90% humidity just the way it sits, which is just dandy. The, uh, so what we have here, for those of you who haven't seen this before, it would take that a while to go up, is a, uh, a flood and drain bed. There's a bell siphon right under that plastic thing. So every 10 minutes or so the water goes up and down in here and it will come out that hose over there. So you got, this is full of water all the time. Now, again, we have a reptile fogger that's sitting on the floor down there. And that's what's giving me my fog, which will start filling this thing up with fog real quick here. And we will end up with a, uh, about 90% humidity. So in addition, I have shut off the spider farmer sf 1000 which is my normal grow light which normally would grow anything you wanted to grow in here and i have hooked in a single light bulb offset uh, to give you light but you don't actually want light on it so those are those are the parameters that i'm given you'll see i'm running 68 degrees temperature so that is uh, oh one more thing we're exhausting this whole area here through a four inch Vivisun very speed exhaust fan. It goes from here into the next row room and then pulled out with another exhaust fan. So we're pushing and pulling and outside. So uh, another parameter of these is that they have good ventilation. I think we've covered pretty much everything. Uh, so that is about it for today. This is gonna be part one Again, I'm going to keep misting this uh, a couple times a day and everything. And the, oh, and one more thing before I go, the tip of the day. What about the cover? What cover? I want to use the cover. Oh. You don't need it. Oh, okay. uh, the, we had a cover on this, and I found out that I can maintain 90 without the cover, so I'm going to leave it off. Uh, the tip of the day is to do just what I'm doing here is, is don't get stuck and thinking that your grow bed is just a grow bed, do whatever you want with it. If you want to grow mushrooms in it, change it around a little bit and grow mushrooms in there. Uh, something I have discovered, which I'm going to work on, is that mushrooms uh, like CO2, or rather like oxygen, and they give off CO2. Plants like CO2, and they give off oxygen. So there's kind of a combination there I'm going to try to play with, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. So anyhow, don't be afraid to try something different. And we will be back as soon as I have mushrooms growing out of there, and we're going to see what happens. Oh, by the way,